Yeah, we are live, Chair. Right, thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Right, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to this call-in meeting to discuss the Mixenden Hub this evening on the 25th of August, 2022. Um, go through the uh, parish notices, as it were, first, if we may. Um, so I know that we have a couple of uh, substitutes this evening so far. Um, we have Councillor Lee standing in for Councillor Benton. Um, are there any others or any other apologies for absence? Yes, Chair. Apologies also from Councillor Young and Councillor River on substituting. Councillor River on substituting for Councillor Young. There, there, there she is. I see her. Thank you very much indeed. Right. And yeah, good evening, uh, Councillor Smith as well. Welcome all. Um, do we have any declaration of members' interest in, with respond, uh, in re regards to this item, please? It would seem not. Thank you. And next part of the uh, agenda. Um, I, it's an open meeting at this current uh, stage. Um, I'm hoping to m maintain that. Um, it possibly may change, but um, I'm hoping it, no, that's not going to uh, necessarily be the uh, be the case. Right. So to the main purpose of the evening, I think I've covered everything so far. Is the mixed and hub development, and um, to discuss the cabinet decision uh, that we're calling in under scrutiny procedure rule number twenty one. Um, you've all received the reports and um, my understanding it's Councillor Lee who is going to be um, introducing the, the call in and the reasons why it's being done. Councillor Lee. Good evening, Chair. Thank you. Uh, actually, it's um, Councillor Caffrey who will be doing the introduction to this, please. Thank you. Chair, before you call upon Councillor Caffrey, may I just uh, remind members of a, a few matters before the meeting starts? Forgive me, Ian. Sorry about that. Uh, after having said everything pre previously, yes, uh, I'd like to invite Ian to say a few words before before we uh, start with with, uh, with uh, Councillor Caffrey. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Um, just to remind members that um, the matter when it went before Cabinet was uh, in an exempt uh, report. Uh, the fact that uh, it has been called in does not waive that exemption. So there are matters uh, that remain confidential uh, for the reasons that were given uh, to cabinet, uh, they remain valid for, for this meeting. Um, the, therefore, there should be no reference to the specific cost that was set out in uh, that report. Uh, the call-in notice makes reference to whether there should be uh, any further uh, prudential borrowing uh, undertaken for uh, this project. That is a legitimate point uh, that uh, members may wish to put before this board, but not the actual cost uh, for commercial reasons. The business affairs of, of Caritas as well, it's public knowledge that they uh, were not able to proceed with their interest in the project, uh, but obviously the reasons why uh, were uh, contained in the report, but they should not be referred to. So the call-in is uh, restricted to the items that were picked up in uh, the notice um, around the um, slow progress and reduced provision within the facility. That is a matter for uh, genuine debate uh, before the board. Um, the um, change in the provision that uh, has uh, occurred over uh, the period this matter has been um, in progress. And uh, as I said, the, the, the further request for prudential borrowing, but not the amount uh, of that plus um, the view from those who have called it in that there should be further consultation undertaken um, with the community to understand uh, their particular um, needs and um, views of what is being proposed um, for the decision that was taken at Cabinet to proceed in that way. Chair, if that is um, a um, approach that members are content to take, then there would be no need for the matter to move into a private session. Uh, but if members um, are willing to refer to the actual amount, then it would have to be something that is uh, dealt with in private. 
that's understood. I think. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just one final um, parish notice before we begin. Um, I'd be grateful if you want to make a comment. If you could use the raise hand function because it will move you in 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 a queue uh, to the top of my screen rather than uh, physically raising your hands on the camera. That would be uh, that would be really helpful. Um, so thank you very much indeed. Um, and uh, on to Councillor Caffrey, please. You're still on mute, I'm afraid, Pete. But some would say they would prefer me on mute, to be honest. <laughs> um, I hear what um, the head of legal says, and I've tried to avoid any mention of um, pound note signs and numbers after them. Although I will allude to amounts, but not specific amounts. Um, we've called this in this particular project because... We think the scheme that's being proposed now no longer represents or rem resembles even the original proposal that was muted about 17 years ago. And we don't believe it'll deliver what um, the residents originally expected. And it's not been determined that what's now proposed is what residents actually want. But and the idea of this meeting is to get a public consultation to get to the bottom of that. So we, we think it should be referred to the residents to, to decide what happens. I mean, it's been going on for 17 years. It's absorbed an awful lot of money before even a brick's laid. Um, and the, the, the money spent so far is well into, well into six figures. Um, and it's been spent on professional consultations, preliminary staff time, nothing actually on constructing anything. So that, that's a bit worrying that we've got there already. Um, originally, the scheme was forecast um, to cost a seven-figure sum, which include a post office, I think it says a medium-sized supermarket, gym, health centre, libraries, other facilities. But it's been watered down now. And, you know, it doesn't even resemble where it was before. And I think all that's left really is a treatment centre and a pharmacy. But as yet, these aren't even agreed leases, so there's not, no definite, no certainty they'll happen. And what, and even with those, we're not even sure it stacks up financially. It kind of reminds me a bit like HS2 list. It's a thinking project with higher budgets. Um, probably a white elephant, unless it delivers what the public wants. And I think there's too much influence to what politicians want, and executives want, rather than what the public wants. But that will come out in the consultation, which I hope we're going to have. Um, going back to the early point about, about numbers, I'm being vague about numbers. I know what the numbers are, you all know what the numbers are, but we can't talk about them. And I, I find it actually quite bizarre that we can't talk about them because this is public money and we are elected to hold the council to account in front of the public and demonstrate the electorate that we are holding the, the executive of the council to account. And by not allowing us to talk about figures, we are hiding that information. If I was one of the public, I'd be questioning why it is being hidden. But I thought I'd meant to mention that because the public needs to know why we can't talk about the cost of these things. Um, this, this scheme's been sort of presented and represented on many occasions. And every reincarnation, there's simply been um, a dilution of the previous proposals. I mean, there's, there's been some recognition, I think, that the reason it's been reincarnated is because it doesn't stack up financially. And, you know, we, we can't just uh, get money out of thin air. Um, but it's now become an ideological project, political project, rather than one to benefit the residents because they're not even being involved in what they want. So, I mean, we, we actually strongly believe that mixing do, does need investments. I think we all agree with that. And supporting delivering a hub of some kind. And, I mean, this is just a derelict site now to become a dumping ground. I mean, it's, it's very expensive to get hold of. A lot of demolition. Now it's just sitting there doing nothing. And so we strongly suggest that local residents are asked what they want to see on this site rather than just build something that might be useful that's been shown in the papers. I was, however, surprised and quite, quite pleased to read in section 3.1 of the cabinet paper that lessons have been learnt from previous construction projects. I am delighted to hear that, given our terrible track record on delivery. Um, but then I'm concerned in the next paragraph, it says that the way to ensure that we're in budget is to increase the cons contingency. 
So it's like it's like saying we increase we increase the budget to ensure we're actually within the budget, and it just it just beggars belief that we can actually work on a financial basis so that can just increase the amount. Uh, again, this is out of the HS2 copybook, so it's it's that sort of thing. So really, I'll, I'll, I'll finish now, but I just really want to finish by saying the purpose of this calling really is to have another look at this scheme with residents' consultation to make sure what does go up there is what they want and not what the council wants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Caffrey. Um, I think I'll move straight on to Councillor Scullion to come back and uh, then, sorry, um, Councillor Lee, sorry, before we do. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to uh, complete the, um, the case for the call-in, if, if I may, and then give Councillor Scullion uh, a complete run at this. Um, first of all, I agree with the... Uh, the eloquent manner in which Councillor Caffrey has dealt with this. Um, and I, I, I want to state from the outset that this calling is literally what you see is what you get. It's a very seriously intended calling with hopes for something better for Calderdale coming out of this at the end. And um, we've already heard that there's been a number of iterations of, of the scheme. It's varied over uh, 15 plus years, as far as we know. And I do want members of the board to, to know that we've researched this in some level of detail. In fact, on a timeline, we've got 38 points of significant events that have happened over the period. So we've not taken it lightly. Uh, we've taken it very seriously. And I want to clarify to everybody that we really do want there to be a development in Mixenden, uh, let's call it a Mixenden hub. Although, because there's been so many variations of what that might be, it's maybe a dangerous name to call it because it's sort of ill-defined. But, um, but we want it to be excellent and we want it to represent the best possible value for money for the residents of Mixenden. Um, and we therefore think that before we accept the decision that was made by Cabinet to go ahead with the scheme as it is, we should, first of all, open this up to a consultation for the people who live in Mixenden to ascertain whether this is indeed what they want. Because my contention, our contention is, if it's not what the people really want because we've not asked them, well then, the losers will be all of us. The people of Mixenden won't get what they really wanted. The people of Calderdale will have paid for something that wasn't really wanted. It was perhaps something else. If it transpires that the consultation is exactly what was really wanted, we'll be entirely happy that that's the case. But we don't think that we should just go into this in the way that we have. There are some doubts about the financial implications of this. And at this stage tonight, we can't go into it. Maybe later on, people will want to talk about it more specifically, which would entail, as Mr. Hughes has said, this meeting going exempt again. Um, but we, we feel that we're, we're missing something by not having a consultation. I see that Councillor Sutherland has um, joined the meeting, and I know that he spoke on this with some passion um, at a recent council meeting. I think it was at the Minster, I recall. Uh, and I'm glad to see that he's here representing uh, the, the councillors at Nixon. And, and incidentally, Guy Beach is, uh, 
has, has broken his leg, so I don't know where he'll be tonight. But uh, he's certainly very interested in this. So um, what we're looking for is consultation. And may I say in this introduction that there is a lot of precedent for consultation. There has been a number of consultations over the years, and they all appear in our 38-point timeline. And uh, sometimes the project, as it was at different stages, has met with some approval together with some suggested amendments. So as it's changed, views have changed. Uh, and just as a reminder, and it's very clearly uh, uh, stated in our calling, um, that the, the original scheme started and over the period has included, but not necessarily at one time. So things have come in and out, but it has included houses, a post office, a medium-sized supermarket, a library, a GP surgery, a pharmacy, and some community space. So that's very wide ranging. And I stress this wasn't necessarily all at one time. Now, what we, we have presently is a library, a pharmacy, and as I understand it, we don't yet have a tenant in place. A, I hesitate to say a GP surgery, which was one of the original intentions, but I think there's something like a health center, not a GP surgery, some other format of health services and the community garden. Now this might be exactly what the residents of Mixenden want, and we believe that they should be asked and invited to comment on it and, and confirm whether it is or not, so that we can all be assured that the money that we spend on this is well spent and maximizes the um, opportunities from such a development for the residents of Mixenden. And finally, on the finances, the fact that a number of the original um, uh, facilities are not included, mainly a medium-sized supermarket, and just presently, uh, the, the fact that there's no tenant for the, uh, the pharmacy, uh, materially changes affordability of this. Um, because money is being borrowed and to service additional debt for lack of revenue streams does change things. So we have included in our, um, our calling, not just the, a recommendation it should be consulted on with local residents, but that the uh, financial people at the council can look at all the numbers again and make sure that we have in place sustainable income streams to pay for what we hope will be a wonderful facility. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Um, Councillor Scullion. Thank you, Chair. And I'm going to ask um, the scrutiny panel to be patient with me because of course at Cabinet in the exempt item, um, I went through in great detail um, the various issues and bits of information that would, I think, had uh, opposition members been there, would I think have assuaged some of your concerns. I must just say that I'm on holiday at the moment and I am looking after the grandchildren, so there may be some noises off and I apologise for that. Um, I entirely get, I entirely understand the frustration of the residents in terms of the proposals that there have been for the, for the Mixington Hub. Um, and I, I really do bow to Councillor Caffrey's, you know, long memory and experience of um, 
some of the issues. 17 years was a, was a new figure for me. And as Councillor Lee said, over that period, not as long as the HS2 planning, but things come in and come out of contention. The climate has changed a great deal, the financial climate, since 17 years ago or 10 years ago or even three years ago since I took over this project. I'm quite keen, as some of you will have realised, to take some of the capital projects that have been sitting on the council's books for a long time and either say that goes, that is not going to happen, or actually get stalled projects to happen and see whether they add up. Now, that's particularly difficult in the current financial climate because, of course, we don't have the revenue support grant, the amount from central government that we used to have, and we instead have to bid for pots of money for all kinds of things, or we're dependent on other partners and stakeholders to put up money for things. And that means that, by and large, there's very little that the council can do in terms of um, funding its own project. This is an exception. This is one which the council is actually committed to finally seeing rise out of the ground. And I would entirely concur with what people have said about um, uh, seeing that patch of ground in, in front, of, front of them or walking past them. And indeed, since the library burned down and had to move to Mixenden Activity Centre, actually seeing you know, that poor state of that bit of building that's left. So entirely understand that. But I wanted to just take focus very much on each of the points that are in the call-in matter. I can't, of course, go into as much detail as I would like to, because we're in the public domain, but I hope that it's helpful in helping scrutiny panel members to come to decision about what they want to do at the end of their meeting. My plea would be not to delay things any further, because I think, as Councillor Lee has said, the good people of Mixenden actually deserve to see something happening there and, and to see something happening there, but also with potential for the future, not to, not to fetter further plans and further developments that might be there in the future. Let me start with the um, question of um, reduced provision of the um, uh, hub facilities within the hub and the length of time. I understand, but clearly I wasn't here, that there was a long time in terms of doing the land assembly and then the demolition and then the issue of the NHS funding for the GP surgery, which the council is not in control of. And that initially moved around different internal streams, making it very difficult for the GP surgery to sign up. Let's talk about the lack of facilities. Certainly in terms of housing, my understanding, and I, I will be corrected by the officers who are here uh, to provide some technical detail, but certainly within the partnership with Housing Together, the site that's just across the road from the vacant Mixington hub site was one that was earmarked within the Together Housing Plans. As you know, the council does not have any housing of its own and indeed doesn't build any housing at the moment, um, but that land uh, across the way, which is partly council owned and partly together housing owned, uh, and there's now been demolition of the flats that were there. That site is there and available, and I think is still in place. I think that was part of the original original discussions. Certainly, in terms of supermarkets, certainly there has been demand demand for retail in previous consultations. Um, and in terms of, if you've read the cabinet paper, you'll see within the cabinet paper possibility of a pharmacy, possibility of a retail space uh, within there. So that is still very much open. Whether within the current retail market, we can attract the right kind of um, retail, it remains to be seen, but we can't really begin seriously on that other than what we've done uh, with our existing advisors until we've actually got the project signed up, and <laughs> signed off and beginning to happen so that people can see what they're getting. Um, in terms of larger supermarket, um, I did meet last year with Oldie um, and we put the site uh, to them as they were looking at additional sites in Halifax, but they have not have they have not followed that one through. Um, but certainly looking at uh, additional supermarkets, um, cost conscious supermarkets, if I may say, um, in the area certainly is something that we have been trying to do. Um, and the question of post office um, is, as you know, 
post offices have entirely changed. Post offices have been closing um, all over the country or moving into large retail spaces like WH Smith, in some cases moving out again, actually. And in some cases, local communities and villages have been trying to save their post offices by taking them over as a, a kind of community asset transfer has happened in um, uh, Heptonstall recently. So I think the post office um, idea, I'm afraid, has been overtaken, overtaken by the years and the change conditions and climate that we find ourselves in. You will know that in, in January 2019, the cabinet um, agreed to develop a whole site solution um, in Mixenden um, at that point. And we were at that point working on a GP facility and um, pharmacy, library, retail commission. We carried on doing, as Councillor Caffrey says, you know, we haven't got architects just lying around waiting to do different kinds of schemes, whether it's a bridge or a, a club or whatever we do actually have to use external people. And we have had papers presented in terms of the um, design, revised cons, cost plans and construction price estimate. And as everybody around this virtual table knows, construction price inflation has gone absolutely haywire. You know, cost of living, cost of living is, is one thing, but actually we have already suffered both supply chain shortages of all kinds of things, plaster, wood, um, steel, um, but now we are really suffering from uh, construction inflation and we have been for some time before the current problems. The project was, of course, paused during the um, May pandemic. Um, and uh, we basically had to try and start things again, stalled project starting again. And in February 2021, the, the team restarted the project, process continued. The project went out for construction tender in November 21. Um, Caritas, sorry, I beg your pardon, the health service provider who was going to provide GP services from there uh, actually started to say that they weren't sure whether they wanted to come in or not. And they did in fact withdraw from the project in January this year. Um, so there has been, uh, there's been a mix of facilities. The fundamental uh, basics are there. And I wanted to go on to say a little bit about what we've done in terms of trying to meet those initial um, plans for facilities mix, and also to try and make the project in ordinary language wash its face as much as possible in terms of adding up. Mixenden as an area, as a ward area, the municipal boundary of the wards, has actually one of the poorest health outcomes in the entire borough in terms of life expectancy and in terms of start in life. Uh, for children, and we all know that actually the best start you give in life to children and, uh, and their parents in terms of making things happen, the um, uh, more important it is to their life chances, full stop. So health has been a real theme throughout all of the iterations of these plans. The majority of the funding was from, for the initial GP surgery service. They were going to be the anchor tenant and they were going to basically pay the, the main cost of the building construction. And then there were the other bits, the library, the retail, whether that was pharmacy or other shops, etc. cetera. Um, and of course, um, community garden idea that was there. And of course, always space alongside to allow expansion when further funding could be got. And I note that further on in the call-in, there is a reference to seeking other sources of funding. Believe me, we have really tried to seek other sources of funding. And in terms of further expansion of the facilities, we will be losing every opportunity in terms of future levelling up fund, uh, UK SPF funds and so on. We will be making sure that we will be seeing whether there's a possibility within the rules, whether there are bids that can be done. So the majority of funding was actually via in terms of paying back the prudential borrowing was via the major tenant, the anchor tenant, which was a health, health tenant, a GP. So um, let me just run through my notes here and maybe come, come towards a conclusion because I'm trying to avoid mentioning 
funds. After the original health provider withdrew, I was certainly very keen, and the council as a whole are very committed to Mixenden. Um, we don't have we don't have, have to do this, you know, but I am keen to make sure that actually something does get out, out of the ground. And Councillor Sutherland um, has been fighting, absolutely fighting for this for such a long time and pushing and pulling and, and trying to make sure that a best possible outcome could be. But of course, we have to get the Section 151 officer, our Chief Treasurer, Chief Finance Officer, to sign off on any plans that they are affordable, uh, that they're prudent, that they don't affect uh, our reserves or our liquidity, etc. So we had to make sure that we had a key anchor tenant. And some of you will know that there has in fact been a change within the NHS in terms of community level services, things like clinics, support for um, uh, breastfeeding, um, school children's health, those kind of basic services in terms of helping uh, children and families. And the plan is basically for the primary care network to be the anchor tenant and the um, officers will confirm, but I think the lease has actually been signed or if it hasn't, it's um, on the cusp of being signed by the primary care network and they will replace the original health tenant. Um, and so I think we will have absolutely fantastic and probably quite flexible services out of there. And they will be the key anchor tenant and they will basically, uh, as before, uh, contribute towards the payoff of the potential borrowing over a number of years. In terms of the financial climate, um, I think we're all agreed that Mixington needs investment. Um, in terms of Councillor Capri's point, if I could address that specifically, I absolutely hear what he's saying, and there is no attempt to, to disguise um, finances or hide anything, but I'm sure you will agree that if you ask um, a builder or a contractor in your house to do something and you say, well, I've only got £500 to spend, isn't it extraordinary how the um, quote often comes in at £498? It absolutely fetters our ability as a council to manage our budget if contractors know how much we are spending and what our negotiations and financial uh, arrangements are. And I'm sorry, those are, those are the only reasons that that is kept hidden from public view. It's not hidden from councillors, you, you will see. And of course, it all appears in the annual accounts and audit committee has a look at those things. And indeed, as I say, the section 151 officer in this case, who shares the cautious, prudent points that Councillor Lee has mentioned, has actually signed off that this is a sound plan and that it can be made, made up. Um, I think it's a sound plan. I think it's a strong plan in terms of having a strong anchor tenant. I think it is a lot better than HS2, but um, that's HS2 without the, the, the Bradford link that I would really, the Northern link that I'd really like to see if I could just divert for a moment. I do think taking another look at this scheme we can't necessarily, in the current financial climate, I don't think we can have everything. But I think what we can do as a council, and for myself as a portfolio holder, we can absolutely commit to finally seeing something coming out, out of the ground for the people of Mixenden, something with strong health services, with other options and with flexibility and space to carry on building and doing better things for the people of Mixenden. What's particularly important to me is that the range, the, you know, the midwives, the health visitors, the physios, all of the people who've been working out of that centre will actually make a difference to the health and the lives of people in Mixenden. I think if we took another look at the scheme, we've already sent out the tenders. We've got two contractors waiting. I am very concerned that delay and uncertainty about the scheme will actually frighten off contractors. There is actually, in the construction market at the moment, um, there is you know, a lot of competition. Now we're a good, we're a good provider of contracts, uh, local contracts, and I would really like to see um, the contractors come forward in this. I think if we delay, 
And we know what the council life is like in terms of the finances. I think if we delay, we may find it really hard to put together the financial package again. I certainly think that we would find it very difficult to get contractors again. We'd been to that old game of bidding for money from different pots, pots of things. And I fear that things would either be very delayed or would never happen. So I'll stop there, Chair. And any difficult questions the officers can deal with. Thank you, Councillor Scullion. And uh, seriously, thank you for coming in on, on your holiday. Uh, that's uh, above and beyond the call of duty, I think, uh, for, for many people. Um, now, I'd like to open it up for discussion. Any questions that people may have, any thoughts um, and anything that doesn't get mentioned on my list of notes here, then I'll come in at the end, if that's OK. Um, I know that Councillor Sutherland might have a few things to say as well at some point. So um, I'd like to open it up to the panel, please. Councillor Holdsworth, thank you. And then Councillor Thompson so far. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I've just got two questions, really. How long do you think it would take to undertake a survey of residents' current needs? I heard what Councillor Scullion said, that many consultations had taken place, but 17 years is a long time. And as she rightly pointed out, things have changed, a post office is no longer feasible. And I also wondered, given the number of libraries that have been closed across Calderdale, <clears throat> is a library really feasible? And is that something that local people would want? I understand about the health centre, um, and I understand about the difficulties of finding tenants for retail premises, but I do think there is some merit in perhaps a short consultation with local residents on what facilities they would like to see. Um, and the second um, comment was, is there, I know we're not mentioning money, is there a final bottom line, given the rocketing cost of construction, at which point the council would say, actually, <clears throat> this has now become far too expensive for us to be able to justifiably proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holdsworth. Um, yes, I, I, I'm going to give uh, after each question uh, the opportunity for uh, for the uh, cabinet uh, member to come back. Um, Jane, that's uh, Councillor Scullion. Thank you. Um, a survey can be as long as it as long as it can be. The question, I think, um, Councillor Holdsworth, is if people say they want a mix of things like post office, um, swimming pool, housing and so on. That is a different, that is such a different mm -hmm. project. And you then have to start again in terms of the, as Councillor Caffrey says, you know, the REBA design stage. Well, what does that cost in the current climate uh, with the supply chain problems and the construction inflation? I fear that it would actually, um, uh, delay things so that we were talking about a completely new project and here we are again um, you know going to cabinet going to council sorting all of these things out um, in terms of that kind of consultation I think we are talking not about consultation we are actually talking about developing a new project can I also just say um, you will have seen over the years uh, things in the Halifax Courier about um, the Mixington Hub. All of the you know swings and roundabouts have been very well well publicised, um, not just by Councillor Sutherland, uh, but but by others. I think you know a library is absolutely crucial to children's development, and it's crucial to aspiration. Really, you know, you read in books about things that are possible, whether that's going into space or you know looking at bugs and protecting the environment, I think a library is absolutely essential for Mixenden. And I would certainly fight to keep the library in Mixenden um, alongside the, the ward councillors. I think it's an important part of a community which really does not have very many facilities at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scott. Before I bring in Councillor Thompson, I'd like to invite Jenny Lind, uh, sorry, Councillor Lind to say a few words. Thank you very much. Uh, just to follow on from that, 
I think it, I, I really, really want us to get a good library in Mixenden. We spent so we invested money on, on the refurbishment of the Beechwood Library um, across on the on the Keatley Road in Ovenden. And I think that's that that we did a good job on that. And I think residents really appreciate it. I think a library is fantastic. It's not just about the books um, that people can get there, but it's about all the other services that, that can be available, including the, need, the the ability to be able to use computers there, which are really which are really important for jobs search and so on um, and a whole lot of other things besides we, people may have already seen that we've all, we've um, we've launched um, a, a kind of um, business support facility at Central Library and we would certainly want to be thinking about whether there might be opportunities for outreach there so I think the I think the new library at Mixenden together with um, you know, co-located with the health facilities, I think will be great. And I hope very much um, that um, that it, it's not going to get cut out at all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I, I absolutely agree. I really support libraries. But given that you've closed Stainland Library, Greetham Library, with arguments that countered what has just been said, I find it strange that other communities have had their libraries closed. I absolutely support the idea of libraries. I think they're brilliant. Um, I'm not against that at all. But the last library was burnt down apparently by arson. Um, and I'm just not quite sure why it's okay to close libraries in, for example, my ward, and then be very, very supportive of libraries in areas like Mixenden. I'm so just making a comment rather than expecting a reply. Thank you. I think might leave that one hanging for the time being because I think there's a, quite a few wards which, which might feel the same way in that regard. But uh, I do absolutely concur with uh, Councillor Lynn's comments about uh, well, libraries as a focus as a, for a community hub. Um, yeah, it's, it's more than just about the uh, the books. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor Thompson. Thank you for waiting. Um, no, that's absolutely fine. And yeah, thank you to officers and cabinet members for coming along. Um, I just wanted to kind of bring it back to the actual what's included in the calling notice and actually what we as a board can actually do, because the obviously the calling notice talks about the alternate revenue streams and also the full consultation. So I guess the question is to um, probably to Ian as legal, is that actually so we have obviously our three decisions. We have refer it to full council, refer it to the cabinet or approve the decisions within that do we actually have the option to turn around, turn around and say that we want that full consultation? And then the question is um, to Councillor Scullion, I think it's already been touched on, but perhaps a bit more detail in terms of if we were to say, for example, have an eight-week consultation, is, is that length of time and the process of going through the consultation, particularly if we go through a consultation and we find that there are things that people want that are not included in the scheme. How significant is the risk that actually the hub doesn't go ahead? Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, I won't anticipate uh, Ian's reply. Um, did you want to come come back on that one, Ian? You know? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Thompson's quite rightly um, summarised the three options available to the board. Um, the reference back to cabinet means that it isn't a decision that this board can take. All it can do is refer it back to cabinet if it so wishes with a recommendation that the reason it needs to go back to cabinet is that there's a further reconsideration by cabinet of the uh, this board's um, indication that it would uh, wish there to be a consultation process. Uh, cabinet still has the final decision on that. Um, it is not within the gift of this board to take a decision. All it can do is refer it back to cabinet. Thank you. With, re with reasons. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, kind of like what he said. I hope that answers the question, uh, Councillor Thompson. Um, blah, 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 blah. Right, Councillor Clark and then Councillor Smith, please. Councillor Clark. Thank you, Councillor Dickinson. I think actually Councillor Smith and was up before mine. Uh, not not according to the raised hand uh, function here. So I'm 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 using that as my uh, as my arbiter. So uh, far away, please. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, um, thank you. Um, what can I say? Um, when I 
became councillor, which was in May 2019, it, it was it was lauded as wonderful that um, the money was there for Mitzend in Hub. Um, and things have sort of dwindled and, and ebbed and flowed ever since. A library, if we, if we go back to uh, Councillor Holdsworth's point, the library was decided to be kept because of the usage of that library, which was it, it was not massive in the in the book takeout, but but it was very heavily used for the computer usage, yeah, and other services that were available at that time, um, as as indeed was Beechwood Road, and we managed to save Beechwood Road, so that that's good. Um, as for this suggestion of a consultation, I mean, if it's been going 17 years and over the since I became a councillor, no one's asked for a consultation with with the um, the residents. And why not if it's so important? Because we, you know, we have put these things to residents before um, at, at ward ward forums. They do want a library. They do want some sort of health facility. Yes, they would like a shop. Of course, they would like a shop. And hopefully, in some way, we can have a combined retail, pharmacy, and grocers or something. That's that's my imagination, anyway. And I'm very disappointed that this, that this has been brought up. Um, not least. Because, well, this is the second call-in this year, and I do, th and I do think these call-ins are pure political party playing. It really is. I mean, what what you're really wanting to do is to to delay construction of of this development. This development has to go ahead. At the moment, in Mixenden, there is. A very very battered piece of land that needs something on it. Together housing are building um, quite a number of new houses just opposite where where this is. They will need the facilities there, and as will all the residents in in Mixenden. It, it's a central part of Mixenden, and it has to be the hub. Um, the contractors are, are there. The tenders are in. The agreement with the PCN has been signed. So why on earth call it in and delay it yet again? And can I just remind you that in the 20, I think it was the 2018-19 budget suggestions of the Conservatives, it was suggested that you just cancel the whole mix and in hope and put, just put the money into budget. So what are you playing at? That's my question. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Uh, yeah, um, outside the scope of us, uh, I think to, to a certain extent here. Um, right. I know, it's, I know it's not comfortable, but you know. Yeah. Still yeah, a yeah. question. Um, right. Um, I'd like to take a step back, if I may. Um, I'm going to sort of like swerve that one. Um, and I need to apologise to Councillor Thompson, um, who did ask a, part, a two part question. We, whilst we addressed the first part, we missed the second one. And I think, Councillor Scully, you might be best placed to uh, to answer it with regards. You did touch upon it in, in part of your initial um, response. Um, but in terms of you, the, the question about how significant the risk of the consultation to the project is, I mean, you did infer there was a risk. Yes, thank you, Chair, and apologies to Councillor Thompson. Um, I did ask the officers when I got the call-in notice, I did ask the officers about this, and we've agreed that the project has been in development for some considerable time, and to pause now or stop the project for a further consultation. Um, there's no numbers attached to this, but the view of the officers is that further consultation would increase costs and cause substantial delivery delays again. And the financial climate, we suspect because of inflation and the pressure on the council in a number of other areas, 
I think it would be an extremely difficult financial climate to bring a revised project forward. Um, and Councillor Thompson asked, well, what if people want things not in the scheme? And that's always, that's what we do as councillors. We take some of these horribly difficult decisions because there's never enough money for everything, really. And I've been involved in local government a long time. And I can remember at the end of the financial year, we used to be running around looking to what we could spend up the money at the end of the year on. But it's been 20 years since, since that, that time. Um, and the question, really, I think I have to refer back to my previous answer, really, which is that new ideas coming in would be a new project. And we would literally have to have to start again. Really. So it would be it would be a real risk. The risk is real. I wouldn't I wouldn't pretend otherwise. The risk is real. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Smith. Thank you. I'm on my phone, so I'm not able to put my screen on. I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I, I think. We have to look at the, you know, things have changed because of external forces. It hasn't all been to do with the council. Um, I I would really like to see something. And I also think, and I know Dan's speaking after me, which is a shame. I was glad that I managed to hear what Steph had to say. But I do think they've got quite active local councillors in Mixenden. And I do think they would be hearing about what people want. And I am sure that they do want a supermarket. I'm sure they do want a better health service. But I th some of these things are out of, out of the control of, the, of, of what we can actually do. If we don't have a supermarket that's willing to invest, we can't pull one out of thin air. So I, mean, I, I, just, I, would, I would really not like to go against local councillors, but I really feel that that they know what people want. And I think if this suggestion's gone ahead, then I think, I'm, I'm no doubt they'd want more, but I do think they, that there is a, a level of consultation with local people. Um, and also, you know, I mean, Councillor Lee said, what do people really want? Well, surely Councillor Beach as well has already got an inkling, you know, if, he, if he's out door knocking and out and about finding out and listening to people, then, you know, he will, he will have some idea of what, 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 what sort of things are, are you know, viable and, and, um, and expected of the hub. And yeah, we're not going to get everything we want. And I also think that the importance of a library, it's a versatile space, it's a warm space, and we might be needing that a lot. And, and I, I know I used it when my kids were little, took them to library, somewhere nice and warm to sit and play. So I don't know. I, I, I think I would really hope that we could do something. But I want to hear what Dan says as well, because, uh, you know, I'm not a mixed in councillor. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, councillor Sutherland. Thank you, Chair. And um, sorry to disappoint, Audrey, but it shan't be a fiery speech from the pulpit tonight. Um, sometimes my passion might be uh, misheard as a earache over the past 12 years um, on the Mixenden hub. Um, but as with many issues we've experienced as ward councillors, it's because we get earache. And I've got friends and I've got family in Mixenden and I go out door knocking in Mixenden. And for, for a good long time, I've been getting the earache that I've been passing on to, to cabinet and officers about how important this project is. Um, there's a long story and it's been really good to, um, you know, hear the debate on this. Whilst there is some frustration around call-ins, it's been good to hear the debate and hear the, the strong support for Mixenden and, and potentially where this journey takes us uh, beyond the cabinet paper, because I'll be the first to say that what we have here will not fulfil the ambitions fully of the people of Mixenden. It won't. If we go out to a consultation, Amongst the uh, desires for a mix and swimming pool that would be thrown in, as, as Councillor Scullion pointed out, the shop would come up very strongly. Um, prior to us uh, getting on this journey with the mix and hub, there were two shops serving central mix and and we've lost both of them. And that causes a number of issues for, for people in the family, people, with, uh, people in the area, people with accessibility issues. Um, and the fact that a supermarket is a two pound plus bush journey uh, if you want to get anything fresh. So there's a lot more to do. So I'm not going to say that the plan we've got in front of us encapsulate everything I want or what people want. But what I 
wouldn't want us for is for us to miss this chance to take that next step forward. And that'd be my concern about um, any delays to this. Um, we need to take that next step, even if it doesn't quite cover everything we might want. Um, and I hope that the panel will help, along with Cabinet, to push for those next steps, which I really think something like a shop and other community space would be beneficial. But I don't think we can stop where we are now um, on the basis of hoping for that. Um, and whilst I do think we need to get straight into conversation with the community about what those next steps should be, it shouldn't delay this first step. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sutherland. Um, right, I'm going to have a go, if I may. Um, a few thoughts and questions came up. Um, having read the report, there was discussion about how a medium-sized supermarket um, wouldn't necessarily thrive on the basis of footfall projections. Um, I'm just thinking about round, round about in my travels um, locally to where I am. Um, for example, not, off, not far off um, Smith House Lane and the Winnie, Winnie Hill Estate and adjacent the Smith House uh, Estate, there are a couple of small, smaller convenience stores, one of which I go into uh, fairly regularly um, for, a, for a bite to eat to, you know, to, to go, um, which also inco incorporates within it a post office counter and also incorporates within it a cash machine. Whether it's free or not, I couldn't say. But, um, and yes, we could have that wish list. I, I absolutely get that, you know, with the, those community rooms to help those people live a larger life as well. Um, the argument that Councillor Sculling put forward for the, the health, uh, access to health is, is, is compelling, it has to be said. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I did a bit of a Google Maps on, 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 the, uh, on the area and the, the housing density isn't as great as, say, for example, the Field Lane estate in Rastrick, um, which does support a, a, a co-op and, yeah, about three takeaway shops as well um, and a hairdresser and other things. Um, and... I am hoping that uh, a new the new tender will allow us to have a much more sustainable building built um, as well um, as part of the remit of the uh, of the of the tender. Um, in terms of a question, though, of a councillor Scullion, um, it almost infers, and the word I'm going to use is not quite the correct one, as though we might be able to take a modular approach to that site. Um, it's almost as well what's a councillor. What's Councillor Sutherland's inferring, um, and I'm just wondering if that can be factored in um, as as part of that, um, so that if it turns out we then are able to track funding to allow that to happen, whether that can then be brought forward. Um, I think that's yeah, that, that's the that's the nub of the question, really. Chair, if I could if I could respond um, to both Councillor Sutherland and yourself. Um, Councillor Sutherland's absolutely right that what before is before was before the cabinet was yet another historic British compromise. You know, it did not meet the needs of everybody or indeed the wishes, wishes of everybody. But given the current circumstances and the current financial climate that we're in, this is this is this is what we've got and this is ready, ready to go. So um, Councillor Sutherland's absolutely right. This is a compromise, um, but it's but it's one that we think, not think, we know that the numbers, the, the section 151 officer is content that the numbers are, are are really good enough for us to go. And it's it's our money, it's Calderdale Council's money. Although we will keep trying to find external monies, particularly for, and that brings me to your point, in terms of a modular approach. Um, if you know the site, you will know that there is there is some considerable space there at the moment. We've got space allocated for community garden, car parking, really quite sizable car parking and so on. But there is a space for further um, small expansion. The space which is immediately opposite the, the site is divided into two. The council does not at the moment own. And that's certainly something for further discussion because, of course, the site is in a very, very poor state. So you're absolutely right. There is a great deal of potential there. And I take your point about medium-sized supermarkets and so on. Um, and indeed, medium-sized shops. 
I think we have to have a project that is committed to and is on the ground in terms of um, actually getting some serious interest. We have talked to our retail advisors who've advised us on things like Northgate House and, and other, other projects uh, in terms of um, what the market is looking like at, at the moment for small estate retail. They said that a lot of people are moving out of that and those that are remaining are depending on alcohol and cigarettes for their main profits. Um, and clearly, in this instance, we're looking for decent, cheap, fresh food like you get in a market. So we are also looking at whether there are temporary things. Um, I grew up in the 50s and, of course, there were lots of fish vans and greengrocers vans and things going around, whether there are temporary market uh, solutions and our markets manager is a Mixenden boy so he's quite interested in that idea so we are looking at both the possibility of further expansion but also whether there are temporary things that we can do but until we actually get a commitment to um, you know a sign off on this because of course as long as this scrutiny um, is outstanding then there is no decision and the delay could really begin to cost us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the operators I'm considering are the likes of One Stop Premier and uh, Londis, for example, uh, those sort of actors. Um, we have a couple more hands up. Um, Councillor Lee and then uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I just wanted to re reiterate a couple of things I said at the start here, uh, just so that everybody's quite clear about our motivation for this. I'm disappointed with one or two of the comments that have been made. The points I'd like to make are that nobody's been arguing at all about libraries. I'm a great believer in libraries. I echo the points that have been made. Nobody's arguing about the beneficial effects of a health centre. Why on earth would anybody argue with that? We're not. Councillor Beach does indeed speak to the people in his ward. He is hearing things. We, we do get feedback from the ward and we are hearing things. The fact is that having a consultation has been done before. It's been deemed in the past to be the appropriate thing to do at the latest stage of projects to just check it out. At no point has our intention been to deliberately delay the thing. If this, if this consultation could be done in a week, I'd say do it in a week. It's just to make sure that there's a buy-in from the local residents to, to, to go ahead with this and make it work. And, uh, and basically, that's it. The financial things, I'm sure uh, Prudent and the 151 officer will sign them off. Um, it's just to make sure that, you know, we're not arguing about what's there. We're, we're querying, merely querying what's not there and what is really required. And I do believe that that should be finally referred to the people that will make this a success or not. And I absolutely understand Councillor Sutherland's comments. It's gone on long enough. Absolutely share the frustration. We've never said we don't want the investment in Mixon. We do want it. We want it to be optimal to serve the community. So that's where we're at. And I do think that this, this could be conducted quickly. If something comes out of the um, consultation that we're able to accommodate, well, then that's a good thing. And uh, I do think it's the right thing to do. After all these years, not to do it is really, I, I think, not the right way forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Um, before I bring in Councillor Smith, um... I'd like to invite <clears throat> Councillor Courtney to say a few words. In, I suspect it's in response to Councillor Lee's words. 
Yeah, thank you. I, I suppose just around um, engagement that, uh, you know, engagement is, is on our uh, agenda in terms of uh, a council. And we're looking at that. I think I think the thing is, is that engagement isn't you can't do um, a, a sort of like a really meaningful, you know, do we have staff that are available to do a meaningful survey um, Im immediately? Uh, I, I don't I just don't think that that's very feasible and, and, and proper sort of consultation and co-production is, is not going to help this project at this point. I think, um, as, as um, Councillor Scullion said, if, if we, we need to get this one signed off and started, and then um, there, there, are, there, there is, um, uh, uh, you know, we are looking at sort of longer term engagement, but meaningful engagement with, with communities across the borough. And I think then that's the point where we can say, okay, we've got these, this is the starter, now what else can we look at? And I think that's the sort of positive way forward. I think if we try and if we if if we fail right now with this and lose it, that's not going to help anyone uh, at the moment. So I think you know absolutely we need to listen to people. Absolutely we need to engage with people. There are lots of ideas coming down the line. I promise you about proper meaningful engagement, about some uh, ideas around co-production, and, and properly listening to communities and finding out you know the best way. Uh, to um, uh, the best way for people, the best way for residents, the best way for the council, and the best value for money. But that's not right now. Uh, I think we get we need to get this done and then we can build on it. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Uh, Councillor Smith and then Councillor Riveron, and I think we can then start winding up um, with, uh, with a few proposals. Okay, Councillor Smith. Um, yeah, similar to what Councillor Courtney's just said, but I do think that we don't want to leave that and then go on with the engagement. I think it's an ideal opportunity to engage, to start that co-production when we're, when we're promoting and letting, the, letting people in Mixenden know what is actually going on, you know, with the new development. I think, you know, it is an exciting time and it will, and, and it might be the sort of catalyst that starts something. If, you know, supermarkets aren't small, medium-sized shops aren't going in, maybe we need to go back to a similar model, possibly better than before, but Mixenden used to have a have a food co-op. You know, they, they used to have things like that. There have been tool libraries and food co-ops in, 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 in North Halifax. Maybe it needs to go back to something maybe with the help of local local cooperatives. I don't know, but I do think that opportunity is there to engage and do the co-production. Co and I do think our communication needs to be loads better, but I think we need to use this as a springboard to sort of help and get ready for the, the next phase. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rivon. Thank you very much, Chair. I agree with a lot of it said, and it's particularly heartwarming to see all the support from libraries. That's something that I have really felt so strongly about all the time being on the council. So it's so good that we're going to have that. Um, yes, this is a compromise, but it's a great step forward and it's great to see the progress. So let's not turn it down just because it's not everything we want. It's still a very substantial way forward. But the main point I want to make is about this is about consultation. I don't think consultation is something you can just wheel out now quickly at the last minute and it be meaningful. Consultation quite often meets quite a lot of cynicism and it might just be seen as a delaying mechanism. Uh, secondly, just something like a survey tends to have a very low rate of response. If we're really talking about engagement and co-creation, that has to be a long ongoing thing, which I would like to see carrying on as we develop this, program, uh, this project and what we can do further, but certainly not as any way of delaying that. I think it will be tokenist, I think it will be badly received, and I don't think it would actually achieve anything in the way of engagement. So once we've got this up and going, let's perhaps talk a little bit more about what we really mean by consultation and engagement. Thank you, Councillor Rivram. Okay. There are no more raised hands, therefore, we now need to consider our options. Just bear with me one second. Um, and um, one is to refer to full council course, which then that happens. Um, release the decision for implementation and refer the decision back to cabinet. Now, obviously the point of the call in this evening is to raise up the notion of the uh, consultation to be referred back to cabinet and set out in the writing the nature of our concerns and, and the uh, potential financial implications. Um, right, um, so, 
in terms of formulating a rough form of words, um, in terms of putting something that we can put to the vote, um, may I suggest for starters that um, um, we have, um, referring back to the council with a view to having that consultation um, and um, with regard Guard to the financial implications more than anything else, trying to avoid that idea of it uh, becoming a, a, a potential white elephant. Um, now, this idea might need tidying up. Um, Bella, um, wouldn't mind a couple of ideas if you can help in that regard, um, or perhaps even from the. Uh... Sorry, uh, Helen, is that a legacy hand? Yes, yeah. yeah. okay. mm -hmm. my apologies. Uh, are you there, Bella? Hey, up, oh, she's gone. Chair, if I, if I can assist, then um, you. you're looking for a, a proposal of for one of the three options that, that you've mentioned. Um, you indicated, Chair, I think that you are proposing that the matter be referred back to Cabinet, with the reason being that it needs to be um, the cabinet need to reconsider its position on consultation. Yes. Members will realize obviously that the financial element of the decision taking the cabinet is uh, going to council in any event. So that issue is not within the gift of cabinet um, to do anything other than to allow it to go to council. So mm -hmm. uh, that aspect of it doesn't need to be picked up as far as this board is concerned because that will be decided at uh, the next council meeting. So the proposal from yourself, Chair, can be um, simplified to say that you are uh, proposing that it is referred back to Cabinet uh, with the reason being that Cabinet is requested or asked to uh, reconsider its position on consultation. Right, thank you. Uh, using that as a form of words, does that, does that satisfy uh, you both, Councillor Lee and Councillor Caffrey? Can we put that forward to a, to a vote? Yeah, fine with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, um, so, yeah. that's absolutely fine with me. Great sure, you, need, so, you need to have a seconder for that proposal. Right, thank you. Can I have a seconder for my proposal? Thank you, Councillor Lee, and in this particular instance. Before, and, before you put it to the vote, Councillor, you need to ask if there's an amendment to that. Thank you very much indeed. In terms of due process, do we have an amendment for that particular proposal? Councillor Rivron again. Yeah, well, I would just like to move... Sorry, am I am I unmuted? Um, and can you see me? No, sorry. We, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, no, right. we can, yeah, no, no I, I just want to move, move amendment that it be real, that the decision be released uh, for operation. Now, I don't know whether that's going to be for or against or whether I need to go and that as, a, as an amendment, because what I don't want to leave is a situation where there's nothing on the table. So right, my, no, my um, amendment would be released the decision. Allow me to clarify in that case. The, the first would be the proposal for it to be referred back to Cabinet if that uh, succeeds or fails. Um, if that fails, then in the, we then take a vote um, about releasing it from implementation or, or, or uh, ref, uh, well, it'd be in effect for re releasing for implementation, um, which I Chair, hope... I'm sorry, um, but it's sorry. the other way around, I'm afraid. It's the way that we deal with motions in the same way it councils. You have a motion, which is a proposal, which is yours, which has been seconded. Yep. Councillor Riveron has put forward an amendment, which needs a uh, which need uh, needs to be seconded uh, initially. Okay. Like to be clarified, perhaps if there's a seconder to that amendment. Uh, Councillor Smith. Yep, Is I'd that, like to second it. That's the uh, second, uh, right? Okay. So okay. Then, then, if I understand it correctly, we then vote on that amendment first. You do, Chair. Yes. Right. Okay. So the amendment is therefore uh, that. Uh, that the initial proposal is more or less disregarded and that we move um, straight for uh, for implementation. Right, so may I have all those... Sorry, is that another hand again, Councillor Smith? No, it was just there, Lee. <laughs> right, okay, no worries, all right. So in that case, can we move that uh, amendment to the vote? All those in favour? Uh, well, thank you for using the raise hand feature. That's, that's, that's great. Um, that's... Five votes for um, all those against. I'm going to put, I'm putting my physical hand up. So that's um, uh, Councillor uh, Fazal. Do you want to take your hand down? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lee um, is against. I'm against. Uh, 
Pete's against, and Sue hasn't voted yet. Um, is that an abstention, therefore? Sorry, Sue. Uh, Councillor Holder, sorry. Sorry. Um, yes, I was going to abstain. Abstain. And uh, as abs abstention. Therefore, uh, the uh, the amendment <coughs> succeeds. Um, the, yeah, our, our proposal for consultation fails, um, and therefore we'll be re releasing that for for uh, implementation. Okay. Right. I think, therefore, that pretty much concludes everything for this evening. Um, is there anything that I've missed? Any final words? Councillor Thompson? Um, yeah, just wanted to, obviously, we've got the vote out of the way, but I just wanted to kind of, whilst we've got cabinet members and officers here, just kind of reiterate, because I think regardless of how we voted in this meeting, there is that cross-party consensus about the way we go about consultation. And I just think that actually it is particularly from what Sarah's saying, it is exciting to hear that we are moving in that direction. I mean, I was walking to work the other day and I went through the Peace Hall when they had the uh, mayor's big bus chat and they were just out in person chatting to residents as, as the footfall came in. And a guy actually thanked them for chatting to him. And I was thinking, I can't remember the last time someone thanked me for knocking on a door. It never happens. It's usually swearing and get off my lawn type thing. But I just think... There is that consensus that actually consultation and consensus, I mean, being cynical, consultation just feels like sometimes can feel like eight weeks of asking people about something they don't care about and getting no responses. And that needs to change. I think one of the worst examples for us was um, the, uh, well, without going into too much detail, actually, because that would be unfair. But I think there can be cases where we just do not, hear from the people we want to hear from and don't hear from stakeholders. And I think going forward, it is not just on this. I think this is a unique case and we're already too far along the line. But going forward, it is really vital that we do reach out and reach out further and look at more ways of doing that. And I think there is that consensus there, regardless of how the meeting's gone tonight. Just thought I'd reiterate that once again. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Wise words, actually. Um, and uh, so it's question of timing that run appropriately, I think. Councillor Scullion. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. I was just basically going to finish the meeting by saying um, uh, councillors, Councillor Thompson's um, uh, cries, uh, cries are indeed heard and uh, more, than, more than noted. And I think Councillor Courtney indicated that this is something that we as a council as a whole take very seriously and watch the space. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scullion. Right. Um, that more or less concludes. I do want to finish off, though, um, and this isn't intended as a rebuke to you, Councillor Clark, but no matter what the motivations for a call in are, whether it's overtly political or not, it is part of the democratic process. Um, I will therefore give you right of reply if you wish to. <laughs> I understand that, but we do have passions. We do. All of us. We do. We do. OK, thank you very much. And indeed. by the way, I am also a mixed in councillor, so I'm very passionate about this. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that concludes our business this evening. We shall see each other again in due course. Uh, is that everything done and dusted?